Sandopolis may not be your favorite gameplay experience, but many players nonetheless appreciate how the music evokes the fears and dangers of an unforgiving desert. A few tracks in Sonic & Knuckles are written in a minor key, but they make the seventh note in the scale major for that extra kick of vitality, as opposed to the standard minor seventh. Flying Battery hits the major seventh quickly in passing, but Sandopolis makes it a regular feature of every section. And even though it is the major seventh, that doesn't necessarily mean it makes the song happier per se. If anything, it's just a jolt of energy to keep you on your toes. If the composer had stuck to the standard minor seventh, you'd be left with a more tedious desert march. As our heroes rappel down the ancient architecture, pyramids loom in the distance, and this melody outlines their majestic peaks. Chord-wise, we've seen how a song like Angel Island has lots of different chord sequences, but Sandopolis uses a grand total of just two chords, five and one. And if you're only gonna use two, this is a good pairing, because diatonically, the five chord gives us the most tension and dissonance possible. Those might sound like bad things, but they're actually good, because composition is a lot about the art of creating tension, then relieving it. The 5 chord includes the 7 and 2, which surround the 1 on either side, strongly suggesting that's where we're headed next. The 7 especially has this magnetic tendency to resolve to the 1. Section A just goes back and forth between the 1 and 5 chord. And in section B, we just hold the 5 chord for the entire section. The 5 chord extends for several measures, as it builds up the fear of impending danger, but we can only hide for so long. Sonic has to face the music when section C returns to the 1 chord. And in songs for sandy dryscapes like this, the minor second note is great for stirring up a sense of mysteriousness and danger. It's the note that is literally right on top of the one, so on a piano, it's the smallest amount of upward melodic motion possible. You don't see it in a lot of songs because such a small distance doesn't help you go on a melodic journey all that much, and it feels a bit grim. But within a Middle Eastern danger zone, the minor second can steal the show, like it does in Sonic 2's Oil Ocean Zone. It's used in the bass too, which slips it into a chromatic walkdown. Gobi's Valley from Banjo-Kazooie is also a masterclass in using the minor second to paint a desert portrait. So if we look at the entire composition of Sandopolis, the total tally of minor second notes is zero. Which is strange, because isn't Sandopolis the most oil ocean-y, Gobi's Valley thing you could imagine? Here's the thing, even if the song doesn't technically use the minor second, it channels that exact energy very directly, and here's how. When you write a song in a certain key, there's a scale associated with it, and that scale repeats throughout the keyboard. So we consider this repeating scale to be the song's overall canvas, and the tonic home bass note is the one, our starting point. But watch what happens if we use this exact canvas of notes, but think of it with a new starting point. Instead of the normal one, we mentally regard this note as a sort of temporary home base. And if we walk up the scale from this starting point, the scale shape we find gives us that minor second effect. It's right there, immediately on top of the home base. That's how Sandopolis is able to channel that minor second energy, even if it's not technically that interval. It jumps right into it in the intro. You may have noticed that the note we're temporarily imagining as the 1 is, in actuality, the 5. So a particularly good time to imagine the scale this way is when a 5 chord is playing, because now all the listener's attention is centered on the 5, our temporary home base. And that's where Sandopolis section B is clutch, because as we saw, it sustains that 5 chord for the entire section. 
though not for too long, as it never loses sight of the song's core point of reference on the true one. Taking inspiration from the greats, this song written for Platform Master's Desert Level has a similar section B that stays on the 5 chord while capitalizing on the scale's use of that arid tonal energy. Sandopolis's exotic mysteriousness is compounded by the uncommonly big jumps contained in the scale itself. If you look at the normal major scale, the distance between notes is either two semitones or just one semitone if there's no note in between them, and that's true for the entire scale. In the minor scale, this is also the case. The distances are one or two semitones max. But as we mentioned, Sandopolis doesn't play by the normal rules of the minor scale because it takes that minor seventh and makes it major. This results in a three semitone distance, which is a big hop. It's the type of long jump Sonic makes in the Olympics, into sand. This scale shape allows melodies to pop up vertically, like those snakes that can stand up straight, as depicted in Aladdin. And in the melodies of Sandopolis, these long jumps on the scale are just as prominent. For the Act 2 remix, Sonic & Knuckles' zones don't significantly reimagine the composition of Act 1, and this is true of Sandopolis, although the bass does implement some noticeable differences. Remember in Marble Garden, Act 1 had those quick stab notes, with silence in between. But then in Act 2, the notes are elongated to fill up a lot more space. Sandopolis makes use of this same remix pattern. Act 1's bass notes are a lot of quick spikes, tiny threats hidden throughout the dryscape. Whereas Act 2 lets the bass notes ring for as long as possible. There's no escape from this claustrophobia, as the dark walls and unsettling ghosts close in on you. And Act 2 switches up the bass yet another way in section B. You know how we count the beats as 1, 2, 3, 4? In this section of Act 1, all bass statements begin on top of beats, specifically beats 1 and 3. But then there's these in-between spots that we count as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So when notes occur there, we call them syncopated notes. In reggae, it's common to have the supporting chords occur via syncopation, like they do in the song Take a Nap from Knuckles' Chaotix. Echoing what we saw in Angel Island, Act 1 of Sandopolis has a standard structure of notes atop beats. Whereas Act 2 switches it up with syncopated notes every other measure. In comparison to the more rigid structure of Act 1, these syncopated notes have a playful effect, as if shuffling around the notes was a prank played by the mischievous ghosts. But this is no laughing matter. Storming the Death Egg is a dangerous undertaking, but in Sandopolis, sudden death is in the air at all times. You're always a few steps away from getting crushed, trapped by quicksand, or impaled by the Badnik's dynamic attack patterns. And each time you bite the sand, the Desert Anthem asserts its dominance. <laughs> ¶¶